so if you want to measure the salinity of your aquarium salt water, I don't know of a DIY way to do it. Just my little joke there at the expense of some of Joey's fans that are still frothing at the mouth after my last couple of videos. But anyway, I've got some jobs to do on my saltwater tanks and I thought it would be a good time to talk about salinity and how to measure it. Typically, you will be measuring one of three ways. Um, often you'll hear people talk about uh, hydrometers in forums and usually that's advice to steer away from them. Now they are typically either a glass tube that will sit in the water and depending on the density of the water will depend how that tube sits and it will give you a reading or it might be a box with a swing arm on it and again density of the water with the salt in it will make that arm rise to a certain point which will give you a reading off of the scale that's printed on the box. Now the reason that they're not very well liked is because they have lots of opportunities for failure and they are things like that arm corroding, extra salt being in the system and stopping it swinging to a proper level, bubbles and things like that often will get in the way and give you inaccurate readings. They're just not very reliable but they are very cheap so if you need to start somewhere I guess that's where you could start. The next place you might want to go would be something like a refractometer um, which is something along the lines of these. These come in all shapes and sizes and they're all various uh, price points as well. Why would you focus? What they're doing is it's a tool where you take a dropper, you'll put a few drops of the salt water on the slide and then look through it and it will give you a reading. And what it's doing is it's refracting, refracting the light to a different degree depending on the salinity of your uh, water. Um, they tend to be something like a specific gravity scale or a parts per million scale that you want to look out for. There are versions of this which you might see on eBay and things like that which actually use a bricks scale and I bought one of them as well. And you can use them but you have to do some very strange and convoluted mathematical um, equations to get you back to a useful number so avoid the ones with the bricks scale go for one that measures specific gravity also make sure you get one which has I don't know if you can see that there go for one that says ATC on it or has ATC there what that means is automatic temperature calibration or automatic temperature consideration Google that automatic temperature compensation because at different temperatures you can get different readings and um, so the ones without that you have to get the water to a certain temperature before it will give you the reading that you're after. Now typically these will come with a little valve in it and a screwdriver that you can do your uh, baseline measurements where you, they give you a solution to measure against or you can measure it against RODI water which will give you a, a stable point there. Um, but very easy to use once you get used to it, very simple, very straightforward. Um, the one thing that if you do struggle is make sure you've got quite a bright light shining on this end and uh, then you can get a, a decent reading of it. Um, these, this is a mechanical one, you get some electronic ones which work on the same principle but again it will just be a, a box that you put a drop of water in and it gives you a reading. The other way you can measure salinity is with electric conductivity and you can get a meter that will do that and for instance this one here. So this one was sent to me by the company that makes it to try it out and if anyone out there is listening I'm always happy to try things out if you're going to send me stuff I'm more than happy with it. So things like this will typically give you measurements in specific gravity parts per million or PSU, I think it's called, um, practical salinity units, which some people are starting to use. So this one, they'll tend to throw in a thermometer or something like that as well, but this one actually measures specific gravity, parts per million, as well as PSU, and it gives you a temperature reading. So really handy little tool, obviously it comes in a little thing like that. Um, this particular model um, came in a nice box, like so. 
presents you with a worrying leaflet straight away. Chinese writing. I suppose it's fine if you are Chinese. Um, but fairly detailed instruction book, although you don't really need it. Comes with a little bit of calibration fluid and a little thing which I've yet to figure out what it is. Let's have a look. Calls it a spoon in the instructions and then never references it again. And it doesn't look like any spoon I've ever seen. I'm not sure what it's for and I've not needed to use it. So, any ideas? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, so that's it. That's my options that I've got personally now for how to measure the salinity. Uh, and now I'll tell you why I'm doing that. And it's this. This is the little nano saltwater tank I set up. Oh, I don't know, a good few months ago, maybe six months ago or so. Um, primarily as a refuge for this little guy here. Um, he was getting a bit beat up in the other tank. Um, but I had big plans for this being a little nano coral tank with just the one fish in it, uh, a few crabs. But as you can see, it is disgusting. And I've come to the realisation that something's got to give and I admitted defeat. I've just not got the time to address it. Now, any time you look at nano tanks, especially nano saltwater tanks, everyone always says how much harder they are to maintain because of that uh, smaller water volume. So any swings in parameters, uh, they're more extreme or more pronounced because of the smaller water volume. And it's true, um, I don't have enough to top off, so the evaporation changes the salinity quite uh, dramatically. I've also got it kind of, well I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm suspecting because of its positioning with the window, and this is a, a window that gets a lot of light, that's not helping with the algae growth, but there's also some cyano, there's all kinds of problems, and I'm sure I could attack it all and treat it all, but... I've just not got the time, um, so I'm going to close this little tank down. So to be able to do that, this guy is going back in the big tank. I'll stick the rocks and stuff back in the big tank as well. So I just want to make sure all the parameters are stable enough or correct enough that I can just whip them across and put them in the big tank, which doesn't have any of these algae problems, any of the cyano problems. Um, and this this tank can just be closed down for the time being and it's one less thing to worry about. Um, originally he was moved in here because he was a lot smaller than the, the clowns in the other tank. Uh, and he has put on some weight in here so hopefully he can still hold his own and we can see how he gets on in the big tank. Obviously I'll still need to monitor how it's doing. Um, so yeah, let's go on with that. I'm going to catch the fish, move him across. Uh, and then start moving these rocks across.
well, that's it, they're all moved over. Uh, they all seem to be doing okay. Give them a little bit of food. I've only been in for about 10 minutes or so, but everything looks all right. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is sometimes it's okay to just admit defeat. It's probably better that I close that tank down than let it sit there and struggle. Um, if I had the time, then yes, there were certainly loads of things I could have done, but just life at the moment doesn't give me that time, so time to take a step back, make it a little bit easier, and I can come back and address it another time. Um, hopefully there'll be no more problems, and if there aren't, I'll probably repurpose that tank and swap it out for this one, um, with this lovely pink colour, uh, and make it a bit of a planting shrimp tank, something along those lines. But that's it for now. Um, if you've got any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. That really helps out as well. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.